Today we'll look at the new and improved CSS display property which significantly overhauls how elements are displayed on your page. Note that this new display syntax has very little browser support at the moment. An elements display property is now split into two different displays, an outer display and an inner display, whereas before we only had a single display value at any one time. You can optionally only specify one of the two and the other will have its default value. The outer display controls how an element is laid out within its parent element, whereas the inner display controls how the element itself appears and how its children are laid out. The default outer display of a div is block and the inner display is flow. I've created a navigation element with some nav items and at the moment I have specified the default display for nav and item. The default inner display flow provides two options for the outer display of its children, which you should already be familiar with, and those are block and inline. When we have a block element inside a flow, the element is positioned onto a new line after the previous element. But we can also change this to inline and any group of inline elements inside a flow will be displayed side by side. By default, a flow element can break into multiple sections when it needs to wrap onto a new line. So for example, if we have an about page element, you can see about is shown at the end of the first line and page is shown at the start of the second line. We used to use inline block to prevent an element from breaking up like this, but this option has now been moved to the inner display type and we can now use flow root to accomplish this. Flow root is very similar to flow, but it also establishes a new block formatting context and what that basically means is that it acts like its own self-contained element and cannot be broken up among a few other differences. So far we've only covered the flow layout, but you can also use flex, grid and table here which lay out their children differently and this all works in the same way it did before. So if we for example set a flex of 1 on our nav items, you can see the flex layout in action. The new way to make a flex layout or any other layout inline within its parent flow element is to simply set its outer display to inline. So if I add in a button here, you can see that the navigation and the button are displayed inline. It should also be noted that the inline and block outer displays have no effect unless they are within a flow or flow root element. So in this case, the navigation is within a body element, which is a flow. So if I were to change this to inline, we would see no difference. And this makes sense because the flex layout does not provide any further display options to its children. Uh, but we can expect the possibility for new layouts in the future to provide new outer display options for their children. We are now going to look at another use case of flow root. So here we have some article containing an image and some text, which is inside a card. And a common thing to do would be to take the image and float it to the left and let the text wrap around it. So as you can see, this image fits in here nicely, but let's look at what happens if we remove a lot of the text. And as you can see, the image actually overflows the article element because the article isn't resizing. And this is just how floats work. However, if we take our card and set its inner display to flow root instead of the default flow, what this does is it makes the element its own self-contained element and everything has to fit inside, so this prevents the float from escaping the element. So if we run it again, you can see the element expands to hold the image. There is also a new outer display called run-in, which works inside flow and flow root containers. So you can see here we have some headings and some paragraphs, and what I'd like to do is move this paragraph to start after the heading. So you might think of setting the heading to have an outer display of inline and also doing the same thing for the paragraph. As you can see, the paragraph now goes to the side of the heading, but at the same time, our headings do not start on a new line. What we really want is for the heading to kind of display like block and inline at the same time. So like block, we want the heading itself to start on a new line but we also want it to behave like it is in line with its neighboring text. So a nice solution to this is to set the outer display of our heading to run in. So as you can see, this is working as expected. So the actual semantics behind this is that the element behaves like an inline element, but is moved inside the element on front of it. 
So if we have a block paragraph, it is as if the heading is structurally placed inside the paragraph. The paragraph is placed onto a new line, and because text is naturally inline in HTML, and now our heading is also inline, the two pieces of text are placed side by side. But if those details are too complicated to understand, you can just try it out yourself and see if it works out. This can be a very useful CSS property if you do not have control over the HTML. We'll now move on to some display values that are not split into an inner and outer display, but rather apply to the display as a whole. So the most common one is display none, and this removes the elements display altogether. And now a new one that we have is display contents. So if we run this, you can see something unusual is happening. And it looks like the card element isn't even there, but its children still exist, and this is exactly what it does. When it comes to layout, it behaves as if the element doesn't even exist, and that the children of our card are direct children of the parent element of the card, in this case the body. So this can be quite useful if we have, for example, a flex element. So we are trying to place these elements side by side, but the last two are inside a wrapper element and therefore are not part of the flex layout. So this can be quite common in React.js or other component-based systems where you split out your elements into individual components and you often see wrappers around your components. And those wrappers can interfere with the layout. So if you are in a situation where you have a wrapper element but you want it to be as if it isn't there when it comes to layout, you can just come into the CSS and apply display contents to the wrapper. So you can see now that our flex UI is laid out correctly. So we'll now move on to the last type of display, one that can be added on top of your inner and outer display. So here we have a list of items, one, two, three, and four, and we want them to behave like list items. So we can apply display list item, and as you can see, we now get some bullet points before the item. However, if we aren't using the shorthand syntax and we have block and flow here, we can now just add on list item to the end. So this will give the same result with the modern syntax. There are some other small details I've missed, such as the Ruby element and the legacy syntax for tables and how that now works with the modern syntax. But you can get all this information from the MDN web docs and I'll have a link to that in the description below. There's also a handy table here of the legacy display syntax and the modern display syntax. So you can also find a link to that in the description below. So for example, you can see inline block can now be achieved with inline flow root and list item can now be achieved with block flow list item. So that is going to mark the end of this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and special thanks to my top Patreon supporter Helgefar Hesvik Lizette. So I hope you've learned something from this video and I will see you all again in the next one.